New York City has been called the capital of the world because of its diversity, its variety of things to do, and its jobs. I am a New Yorker, but I've traveled all across the US, and as I've traveled, I've seen some major cultural differences between life throughout the rest of the US and life in New York City. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you what they are and why us New Yorkers are... The word is better, better. <laughs> You said it, not me. <laughs> Cost of living. To live here in New York, it's 128% more expensive than the rest of the US. So essentially, whatever your salary is, you're gonna increase that by 128% in order to match your standard of living here in the city. And that's often why the salaries are higher. When a New Yorker says their salary to someone that lives outside of New York City, a lot of the time that person thinks it's really, really high. But remember, our cost of living is more than the cost of living outside of New York. Yes? Taxes, taxes are horrendous. Oh, don't get me started. That's a whole other topic. In fact, I was in Florida recently and someone was complaining about how federal taxes are so high. And I was like, please, you don't have, we have federal tax, state tax, and a city tax here in New York City. You have a borough tax? There's no borough tax, thank God. A street tax? No. It's an attitude tax? There's an attitude tax, so don't get one with us New Yorkers because we'll... Mm -hmm. You think we can get a cup of coffee? You know what? I want a cup of coffee too. Forget about it. <laughs> Just kidding, you guys, I don't talk like that. That's actually uh, one of the stereotypes of New York is a lot of people talk with that accent. Rating my dad's on, New York accent. Ma. Water. Long Island. Coffee. <laughs> Say it right. Coffee. It's an old school accent, it's hilarious. But you're not gonna encounter it too much here in New York. You're gonna have an accent like what you hear me saying, that's the most common situation. Watermelon. <laughs> Water. In the draw. I don't know, this doesn't even make sense. I'm walking here. <laughs> Look at the perfect thing. I'm walking here. <laughs> hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. But besides the accent, the other thing New Yorkers are known for are talking very fast. Now, we technically do not speak faster than other places in the U.S. What's often... <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, let me go. My point is we actually don't speak faster. We actually use more words and we talk more than other states. This actually has been proven. New Yorkers use 62% more words in conversations than other states. Isn't that crazy? 50 cents said, you know. You see, I talk a little fast, but if you listen a little fast, I ain't got to slow down for you to catch up. Oh yeah, and 50 Cent, where was he from? New York. The jobs here in New York are unlike anything else you can really find anywhere else. And part of the reason why New York City is called the capital of the world is actually because the United Nations is located here, and that means it's a very important center of diplomacy. In addition to that, you also have 65 of the Fortune 500 companies here, which is the second highest concentration of Fortune 500 companies in the entire world, right behind Tokyo. We're also the financial center of the world. We have Wall Street. There's just a lot of very high paying jobs here and that is because this is a center of commerce in many ways. This is a great spot to start your career because I think it really prepares you for working anywhere else. This is a Supreme Courthouse that is here in the city. This entire area that I'm in actually has multiple courthouses. There's one over there too. Yeah, actually, I don't know. <laughs> That'd be cool though. Actually, fun fact, I was invited to be on Judge Judy. This is a 100% true story. I have, it has nothing to do with this video. When I was in high school, I got into a car accident because I let this stupid guy drive my car. Big mistake, high school, you know, it's like, oh, I, I like you. Like, if I let you drive my car, you'll like me, me too. And then he crashed it and then he refused to pay any of the damages for the car. And so my mom uh, sued him and then Judge Judy, apparently his, her team looks through all these files and found it and was like, this is perfect for the show. So she sent me a letter, this is a letter, okay? That's how long ago this was, and invited 
the two of us, me and the guy I was suing to come to LA, full cost everything. She said she would pay all the lawyer fees. But I didn't want to make myself look like a fool on TV, so I never did it. You sound just, like a fool. I think I got the money eventually, but it was like 10 years later. Don't let stupid teenage boys drive your car. Moral of the story. <laughs> The sense of time in New York is completely different than the rest of the country. Here, I need it now means I needed it yesterday and why isn't it on my desk? Listen, I worked in corporate for five years and I never took a lunch break. The reason is because every time you took a lunch break, you would be silently judged and so no one did it. You work harder here, you work faster here, you work constantly here. In contrast, the rest of the US has a much better work-life balance from what I've seen. Also, things don't move as crazy fast, which is a good thing and I'm so jealous because here it's like, if you're not constantly working, if you're not working harder than every other person, then you're not gonna get ahead. And we have so many people that are so intensely motivated hard workers, uh, just like the most talented, the most crazy people in the world here in New York because it's kind of, you have to be a little bit crazy to live here. Put in the work. The rest of the U.S. is just like way more livable, I think, long term. And that's why you see a lot of people come here in their 20s, come here for college, and then once they kind of get ahead in their corporate career, they'll move out of the city to start their family. It's the reality of the situation from what I've seen. One thing I've noticed from traveling to more small towns is New York City is super, super diverse in really every category, not just with ethnicities. I'm talking with socioeconomic, like education, literally every single category, we're diverse. We're actually the fifth Diversity. <laughs> diversity in getting around, diversity in language. Did you know there's actually 700 languages spoken in New York City? That's 10% of the world's 6,000 to 7,000 languages making our... Diversity. <laughs> diversity. <laughs> making our city the most linguistically diverse in the world and possibly in all of history. Yeah, Queens is the most diverse area in the entire country, if you just look at Queens. Did you know Houston, Texas is actually the most diverse city in the US? I was surprised when I learned that when I was in Houston. Sometimes I'm like, should I move to Texas? It's a really cool spot. Do they have a Chinatown in Texas? Are there a Chinatown in Texas? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the answer's been made already. <laughs> Where in Texas is? San Antonio. San Antonio, thank you. Look at that. Texas people coming through immediately. I love it. <laughs> but if you look at small towns in the US, you're not gonna experience the diversity that you have here in New York, which I love. It's awesome. One thing you'll notice when you come here to New York is everything closes way later than it does in the rest of the country. It is normal for restaurants to take the last seating at 10 or 11 p.m. Now throughout the country, that is definitely much later. And bars is with that too. Our bars generally close at 4 a.m. I think in the rest of the country, it's normally around like 1 a.m. So stores, for example, the H&M in Times Square, the last moment you can get in there is 11.59 p.m. You can literally be shopping until midnight in Times Square. And I love that about it. But well, that's New York for you. It's a city that never sleeps. Another big cultural difference is where people live. Throughout the US, most people live in homes. Occasionally, people live in apartments, but in New York City, the vast, vast majority, in fact, I would say 99% of people live in apartments. And the other huge difference is most people rent. They do not own their property. If you look at the stats, 68% of New Yorkers actually rent versus the nationwide average is 36%. So it's not uncommon to hear New Yorkers talking about their rent, complaining about their rent. The rent in New York City is about 300% higher than the national average. So the vast majority of paychecks go to that versus other parts of the country, you're not gonna see that. Now, why why don't we buy? Oh God, if I had a freaking dollar for every time someone commented about one of my apartment doors being like, why don't you buy? I can't believe you throw that much money away in rent. Listen, I get it. I get it. I've traveled across the US. I've seen what you can get for what I pay in rent. 
and it's mansions. It's incredible, beautiful places. That's not the reality here. Most people cannot afford to buy because the cost of buying even the worst place is what you can get a very, very, very nice house for in the majority of the United States. So I would say to those visiting, just understand that we're also frustrated with the renting situation and that we wish we could buy and just don't make us feel any worse about it because we're jealous that you could own your property. I wish, hopefully someday. There is a major difference in New York about how welcoming we are versus other places. And what I mean by welcoming here is how friendly you are. So in New York, it's very strange, especially in Manhattan, if you walk around saying hi to people. Here's why. Number one, there's way too many people, so saying hi to everyone would be very difficult. But the main reason is because when people get approached on the streets in New York, especially New Yorkers, what we're thinking is, what do they want? Are they gonna scam me or try to sell me something? Because most likely that's the case when people come up to you on the street in New York versus like what I've seen around the US is that's not very common. So like people, when you say, when you see someone on the street, it's just welcoming to be like, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? You know, or like, hey, how's it going? Hi, whatever, you know? And I love that about other places, but unfortunately in New York, it's just the quantity of people. It's too much to do that. And then it, it like, people just assume that you're trying to sell them something. So I wouldn't recommend doing it because it will come off as a bit strange to New Yorkers. The other thing is don't make prolonged eye contact with people. I know that sounds weird, but it's, it's looked at as like kind of creepy here. And also New Yorkers will call you out on it if you're staring at someone too long here. We're known for being big talkers and just sharing our opinions. Uh, so I just wouldn't recommend prolonged staring here. One of the biggest cultural differences involves our lifestyle, and that is walking places versus driving places. In New York, you pretty much walk everywhere. Or you take the subway, you take a bike, you can take an electric bike, look, there's one over here, or you take a scooter right here. Very few people can actually drive a car here. Well, about 50% of New Yorkers even have a license. One thing I noticed after years of being a tour guide is that a lot of people from outside of New York City have trouble walking the amount that we walk here, which is understandable. Us New Yorkers, we're used to walking multiple miles a day because it's just how we get around. Everything's walkable. If you're visiting from outside of New York, it may be a culture shock to you because your feet will hurt. And wearing those cowboy boots? No, don't wear these. These, I mean, I'm wearing these because it looks, it works with my look. You see? How many miles do you think we walk on average, Lucas, when we film? I think four to five. Four to five miles a day when we film. And I come back and maybe my feet hurt a little bit, only a little if they heard it all. But that's not all you need to know. Check out this video on preparing for your trip to New York City for all the things that you need to know before visiting here.